So you're a business owner with a somewhat complicated business model and you constantly find yourself copy pasting data into Word templates or Excel templates and then generating PDF, sending them over to clients via email, making changes, going back to those templates. Ah, that is so 1990s. Let me show you a much easier way where you can create dynamic quotes that clients can see online, accept the line items that they want to accept, sign them and get the deal done. Let's see how it's done. All right, so the concept is that I'm going to impersonate a business owner who sells advertising on billboards. And the goal is to create a quote as quickly as possible for one billboard with some additional services and get that sent to the client. Let's go. So here we go. I'm gonna create a new quote, I'm gonna pick a client. I'm gonna add some quote line items. Create a new line item, add a product, billboard 101. Contract duration is going to be 12 months. The price per month is 4,000 times 12. That's my final price. And I also want to throw in some additional services like quick installation and premium lighting. Hit generate quote. Quote has now been sent. And I will also now get my PDF that I can open up and just check the quote itself. Now, I'm gonna impersonate the client and I'm gonna jump in into my client email and see what do I have, okay? So I've got a quote, I'm gonna open the document and I want you to, to take notice that now inside of my system, the quote immediately is gonna be marked as seen so that we will know when the client sees the quote. I open up my quote, I'm the client now, and I can see my breakdown of all the line items that I'm being quoted for. But I can also choose, cherry pick certain things that I may or may not want to include like quick installation or premium lighting. Let's say I am okay with just the premium lighting, but not the quick installation. And the quote has gone down from, what was it? 53,000 to 51,500. I'm gonna press start, put my signature in and press finish. See what happens to our system here. The quote has now been accepted and I can also see the accepted value of that quote, plus the signed PDF with the choices that that client has done. So in our typical fashion, let's go ahead and dive in into how to get this built. Now, if you want a shortcut, I've included a link down below with a package that you can purchase for this particular template with the Airtable database that you can copy and the make scenarios that I'm using for this. Of course, you're gonna need a Pandadoc subscription if you want to get this implemented very, very quickly and you don't want to DIY it. But in case you do, let's dive in. So in our typical fashion, let's go ahead and take a look at the database. And right after that, we're gonna take a look at how to set up the make automations that basically run the show behind the scenes. So first and foremost, we have our products table. As you can see here, it's nothing really to call home about. Super humble setup, nothing crazy. Just a name field, a product type field, single select with my product types, a description for each product type, the price unit per month or one time. And then we have a price for each and then the quote line items and the quote line items where the item is an additional service. When I'm creating a line item, I'm reusing some of the products that I have where I'm trying to say that it's an additional service of given line item. The next thing that I want us to take a look at is the clients table. Again, super, super straightforward. Just the name field formula that is just a concatenation of the company name, a title, first name, last name, company name, email, address, the address broken down, well, the city, the state, the postcode, and of course the link back to the quote. The quotes table. Again, 
there is a few fields here that you need to pay attention to, but it's not really that hard. We have our name name field, which is a concatenation of the client, space pipe space quote space hashtag, and then the quote number, a link to the client's table. Then we have a link to the quote line items table with allow linking to multiple records. Really important that you mark this as checked. Then we have a, our well, trigger field, which is the generate quote, a text field called last updated status so that we know when the quote was last updated by the system. We know that something's happening. Then we have a quote auto number field or rather quote number field, which is an auto number type so that every single time I create a new quote, there is a new number that gets generated. Even if I delete previous number, it will still continue generating new numbers for me. So every quote number remains unique, which is really important. Then we have a PDF attachment field just to store our PDFs for review. Then we have a quote status field with all the statuses of the quote. We have new, sent, seen, accepted, and declined with the default option being new, which is really important. Next, we have sent on, which is just a simple date field. Accepted on, again, a simple date field. Accepted value, which is a currency field. Again, we have this to store the accepted value because as you saw in the quick demo that I did previously, the quoted value may not be the same as the value that gets ultimately accepted by the client. Part of the beauty of the system, I would say. Then we have a record ID field. Again, this is just being used in a bunch of other, like in the automation side of the system. We just need the record ID from this quote. The total expected revenue, which is, I think it's self-explanatory. We're just basically summing up all the price, the total prices from the line items so that we can get a total value of the quote. A doc ID, which is the doc ID from Pandadoc. I'm just storing this. I'm not really using this, I believe, in any real capacity, but I'm just storing that as soon as the quote gets created. It's just good practice to do that. And then the status from Pandadoc, we are using this somewhere. I believe we are. But yeah, again, just good practice to store some of this data inside of Airtable. Finally, created on date, which is just a created date from Airtable and created on or sent date. So I need that field to tell me what the latest date is. If sent on is blank, then show me created on date. Otherwise, show me the, the sent on date. And I believe I'm using this for a front end for this system, but that's an upcoming video. Now, finally, we've got the quote line items. Again, nothing super crazy, just the name field, which is just a simple concatenation of the product X1. And then if the product is a billboard, we also concatenate a space for space and the contract duration, otherwise nothing. So there you go. If I was adding an extra additional line item to this and the product was custom works, you see, it's not including the 12 months or whatever. Even if I put it in, right, it's just ignoring it. It's waiting for that product type. So that's why we have that if. Then we have a link to the quote, obviously just link to the quotes. Again, a lookup of the record ID from the quote table being used somewhere later and down the line. Product type select. This is an extra field that we're using in another system that I'm going to talk about in another video, but it's nice to keep it there. Basically, it's the same product type selection as we have in our products. Then link to the products. Very obvious because we're just adding line items, the product type from the product itself, the billboard, right? Just a simple lookup of the product type, the contract duration, simple dropdown, 12 months, 24 months, then the name from the product, just a lookup field, again, being used in automations and such, custom description field, just a long text, nothing crazy, and the custom price field, 
just a price currency field. Then we have a final price, which is a formula that basically goes like this. If the custom price is blank, bring me the price from the product. Alternatively, give me the custom price. If this doesn't exist, give me the basic product price. If it does exist, use that. As you can see, that's how it works. Then we have final price, including duration, which essentially says that if the value of the contract duration is more than zero, in other words, if there is a contract duration, then extract that value as we do here and multiply that by the final price. Alternatively, if there is no duration, just give me the final price. Then we have price from product, which is just a lookup of the price from the product. Then we have another link to products. And again, we're allowing the linking to multiple records. And this is exactly what it says on the tin. Um, this is just an extra thing where you can add to your main product some additional services. Finally, we have the total from optional services. This is just a roll up where I'm rolling up the price from the optional services and just summing up the values. So that gives me a number. And then as you can expect, the final total price, including optional services, that is just me summing up the final price, including duration field and total from optional services, which gives me my final quote um, expected revenue. Now, let's take a look at how the automations are set up for this workflow. All right, so now let's jump into automations. There is a generate quote automation that I've just created. If you've been watching the channel, I'm doing exactly the same thing every single time. So this is very easy. Our trigger is generate quote is checked. And then we run the same good old script where I basically have my webhook. I also started copy pasting my link to my uh, make scenario because that's just good practice. And the last thing that you need to remember to do is to add this record ID input variable and map the Airtable record ID inside the value field. That's it. Finish editing, turn it on, and you're good to go. The next stage is, of course, setting up the make automation. This looks a little bit scary, but it's fairly repetitive. So let's take a look at what's going on. First of all, of course, we're jumping in and getting our webhook. That's the address that you need to use in your automation script over here. Basically, just copy it from here and paste it in there. The next thing that we need to do is, of course, get that quote. And as you can see here, I've got my record ID mapping the record ID into our sales DB table quotes, and we're getting our quote record. Next thing we need to do is we need to get our client. So we're getting another record base sales table clients, and we're mapping the client array into this field. Then we have a quick little router. Following that, we have an iterator that iterates through the quote line items of module number two, which is the quote. And then we are actually getting each quote line item. And because we want to take all of this data and create a custom array from it. Now there is a filter here where I am basically taking on and making sure that the product name does not contain custom works. And it's important that you do that. Now, next, we have an array generator, which the source module is number four. The target structure is pandadoc created document product section. This one over here. The section name should be called baseline products. We have section rows set up like so, and then also we're doing this. We're converting the name to string and we're getting the first one because this sometimes come up comes up as an array, as you can see. So therefore I need to make sure that it's always typical string. Then we have our description, which basically looks like this dollar sign, a space and final price, then another space and then two string because this again comes up because it's a lookup comes up as an array. Uh, you need to stringify it. Yeah, the price per unit. 
Then we have price. Again, price sometimes comes up as text, but because it's a number field in Pandadoc, you need to first stringify it and then parse the number from it. Next, we have quantity. Again, another number that is delivered to us as text for some weird reason. So from Airtable, so we need to parse that number and that's that. That's it in terms of this particular array. The next thing is that we are updating the quote with a quick little last updated status. So we're printing in just a timestamp so that we let the user know that something's happening, right? Next, we have a very kind of similar setup, but slightly more complicated. Again, we're iterating through our quote line items. We're getting that quote line item based on the record ID from module 14, the iterator. We have another filter where optional services exist. That's very important. Don't forget to add that in. Next, we have iterator. We're iterating yet again through optional services and we're getting the product from those optional services and we're aggregating the iterator 17 the target structure being product section section rows and we're mapping in the name we're mapping in the description we're mapping in the price again doing the same thing with price although it's a number i'm still converting it to a string and then parsing that number and quantity one that's that Finally, I'm doing an array aggregator with the section name looking like so. And before I forget, target structure type is product section. From there, the product section name, I have a quick little if here. So if the ar array is equal to zero, this array, array from th this array aggregator, essentially, if I don't find enough products, I want the system to print these dashes. Alternatively, print additional services. From there, the last thing that I need to do is map my 16 array, which is this thing over there, map it into section rows. Next, I'm actually looking for quote line items. I'm creating a little search here. So I'm looking in my quote line items for the record ID from quote being my quote ID from module number two. Then I have a quick little filter here that the name text contains operators custom works. Basically, this particular array deals with custom work line items as we added slightly earlier when I was demonstrating the addition of a quick quote line item. So I'm gonna take my quote and I'm gonna add a product called custom works because all of these are dynamic sections that's why i'm creating all of these arrays in make because finally at the very end i'm gonna map them into pandadoc so at this point i'm basically saying okay look are there any custom works and i'm doing it in this slightly weird way but ultimately it does the job so bundle order position is next and i'm using a numeric aggregator and looking at the maximum value and mapping that in from there there's another filter where i'm saying look is there any text contains operators not equal to zero so then we have our iterator we're iterating again through the quote line items we're getting that quote line item from the iterator there is a filter text contains custom works so i'm mapping this name from the quote line item text contains custom works and then i'm creating an aggregator very similar to what we did before we're just doing another get one because that's an array the description custom description is mapped this time and we're doing parse number again final price so to string we're stringifying the final price and we're par parsing that number and we're giving it a quantity of one if your quote needs to have multiple quantities mapped in, that's totally cool as well. But in my case, I'm just mapping one of each item. Finally, we're doing the same thing that we did in the previous section over here. We're basically creating an if statement. If the length of this array is zero, then just print these dashes. 
Alternatively, if we do have custom works, please print custom works. So that's the name of our section. Finally, we're mapping the array from number 22 from over here, basically just pressing on that thing. And that's that. We're almost at the end. Next thing, we need to create a quote. So document name, I'm just naming it the same as I did in my Airtable record. So that would be Acme space pipe space quote number 17. I'm using my template from Pandadoc. Then the role of the center is the dev team email. The role of the client is also uh, hard coded. Then we have the, uh, I'm just mapping the city, the client company, the client first name, last name, postal code, client state, title, all of this good stuff, the sender company. And finally, here in the products, I have my table name, which is pricing table one. I have the currency, then I have my sections. And this is one of the most important bits. You have to merge the three arrays that we created. In other words, you can't just map one array. You have to actually merge all of these arrays. Number five from way back here. This one, I believe, as you can see, it's kind of flashing. It's kind of pulsating. Number 26, it's over here. And then 32, sorry, 33. There you go. That's, uh, that's the one from there. The subject is your quote from Sonos Consulting Incorporated. Hi, and I'm mapping the first name. Please see our quote as discussed. Kind regards, Alex. And also I'm creating a quick little document metadata because I want to make sure that the document at all times carries the record ID from Airtable. So I'm creating a quick little key, AT underscore rec underscore ID. And I'm mapping the value from my original quote over here. And that's that. Next, we have update quote. I'm basically doing a quick little update to say that, hey, something's happening. I'm basically saying that there is an update status. So I'm putting like a um, timestamp in there. Sent on, I'm printing now in here so that the sent timestamp gets updated. And I'm also at updating the status uh, to downloading PDF. Then the next thing, and we're almost at the end, we have our document ID because I'm, I just don't, I want to download a document, right? So I want to download that PDF. So I need to use the download a document. I'm mapping my document ID from module number three. I'm finally using zero code kits, upload a buffer file to a temporary storage, to a temporary URL, sorry, there you go. And I'm just mapping the data that I get from Pandadoc and the file name is basically quote dash and the quote number dot PDF. From there, the final, final, final piece is to update the quote one more time with the last updated status being updated and the temporary file URL that you get from a zero code kit from module 19 to be printed in this PDF file URL and the file name from the file name of Pandadoc. I'm also at this point, uh, because I forgot what I was doing this, I actually, at this point, I'm updating the document ID from Pandadoc and the doc ID and the status one more time. And that's it in terms of the first automation that, that creates and sends the original quote. Let's take a look at another automation that listens to the changes and updates our quote within Airtable. So this automation here listens to any updates that occur within our document after it gets sent. And what you need to do is you need to create this watch documents module. And uh, it's really important that you add some very specific things to it. I've already created my webhook for this, but when you're going to be doing this, make sure that you press add, give it a proper name, a webhook name as well and then make sure that you select all the webhook payloads and all the triggers and make sure that it's marked as is active. Yes, I've already done that. The next thing that you need to be careful with is this little filter that I've implemented. So the status should equal to document.sent or document completed or document.viewed. From there, it's actually very simple. 
we're updating the document at that point, fetching our quote from the metadata AT record ID that we get when the process gets triggered, because that carries the record ID that all of the quotes that we need to update and just ping the status and the status field. Next, we have a router that basically determines that, you know, depending on the state of the document, I want certain things to happen. So first status is sent. So when the document status is sent, update the record. And again, I'm fetching that record ID from number two, and I'm setting my status, my dropdown status to sent and sent on again, just gets updated one more time. If the document status is document viewed, then we update that Airtable record again with quote status seen. And finally, if the status is document completed, then we get that document again and we download that document from the document ID. We don't need both because later on, we're actually fetching some data from this document and updating it here in Airtable. So make sure that you do both of these things. So again, we're mapping that data that we got from number 11 into zero code kits, upload a buffer file to temporary URL. And we're doing that. So map the data and X and the file name is accepted quote with the metadata at rec ID. And of course, don't forget to put dot PDF because otherwise it won't work. So yeah, that's that. And finally, uh, we update the quote with the temporary file URL and the file name from uh, zero code kit. And don't forget to mark the status as accepted from this dropdown and accepted on with a uh, timestamp. Last but not least, we get the accepted value, the total amount, the grand total down here from Pandadoc because otherwise you won't be able to compare the original quote versus how much they've actually accepted. Now, let me show you how to set up the actual Pandadoc template to make this whole thing work. So let's take a look at how to set up the Pandadoc template. It's really straightforward. So the way that I did it was to just go into template gallery and go to sales and use the sales quote template. Now I've amended it a little bit and let me show you what I've done. Really not that much. So sales quote template, this is my slightly tweaked version of that. Initially, I just added my logo. I removed all the, like the background color because it was blue, just added some uh, fake, you know, company details. And that's it in terms of the header. I left the rest of it as is. The next thing that I did in terms of changes, I changed the parameters of the table field where essentially I've just played around with the design and made sure that the row colors are um, uh, transparent and there's no alternate row coloring. There you go. Oh, padding was set to medium because I think there will, the original padding was narrow or something like that. And literally that's it. I didn't do absolutely anything else to, uh, to the template. And that's all you really need to know about the Padadoc setup. So yeah, thanks for watching this short, well, not so short tutorial. Let me know in, in the comments below what you might want to see next in terms of automations and AI and stuff like that for Airtable. And yeah, I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers. Thanks.